Hey friends, Sarah here. Looking for a way to make your day better? Make biscuits. Sourdough biscuits. I didn't even know until just recently. Let's do it together. It starts in the usual way. We've got four cups of all-purpose flour. And to that, I've got a cup of butter. In this case, vegan butter. You can use lard if you so choose. You can use shortening if you want, or butter. No rules here, just make sure that it's cold and I've cut it into small pieces. And I've got a pastry blender. So if you don't have a pastry blender, no big deal. Just get in there with your hands and work it until the butter becomes pea-sized or even oatmeal-sized. But if you choose to get in there with your fingers, put this mixture back in the fridge to chill for a few minutes while you prep your other ingredients. Ooh, speaking of prepping other ingredients, we're gonna need buttermilk or if you don't uh, consume buttermilk, or if you don't have buttermilk, you can get any old milk, right? This is um, oat milk. And you can just toss a little vinegar in it. And a teaspoon, tablespoon, whatever, just a little slosh. Give it a swirl around and let it set for a moment. And so we'll get to cutting the butter into the flour. So this is a common action for pie crusts, as well as biscuits and scones, things that are light and flaky. And this recipe is really great because it's another way to use up your sourdough starter if it's been sitting neglected in your fridge for a minute. Um, because it also uses quite a bit of starter, it uses um, a whole cup. And what I thought was so fascinating about this particular recipe is that it still makes a tender and flaky biscuit, even though a whole cup of sourdough starter is added to it. Mm, before we get too far along, let's add some more things. I've got one tablespoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, and a half a teaspoon of salt, which I'll just sprinkle in and it'll get mixed in. Uh, as we cut the butter in. Now when you're making these flaky things it's so important that your butter is cold. Sometimes if it's very hot outside like it is now, I might even go as far as to put all the ingredients in the fridge or the freezer, at least the dried things in the freezer. All right, I like it. See, it's kind of shaggy in texture. Kind of um, sandy, something like that. So I'm just gonna quickly clean off my um, pastry cutter and get it out of the way. So, let's get back to our liquid ingredients for a moment. So our milk is kind of getting curdled, which is what we want, we want that um, acid from the vinegar to interact with the baking soda that's in the flour so that we can get a little extra lift. Now for those of you who um, are wondering what's the difference between baking soda and baking powder? Baking powder is a combination of both an acid and a base so when it hits water it will activate. So our sourdough starter is super happy and we're going to take a whole cup of it. Yeah, just a smidge more. And then we will add it into our soured milk or buttermilk or what have you. I'm just gonna take a moment to incorporate. So just take it, take your time. A whisk would probably make this easier and also a larger container would <laughs> make this easier. But you know, while you're in the kitchen, you might as well enjoy it. Take stock of the moment, right? It's a nice thing to be able to feed yourself and to feed your family and to share those tasty things with those you love. All right, so I'm gonna call that good. Now, back to our dried ingredients and we're just gonna dump it all in. 
As I might have mentioned before, it's important that you don't over mix biscuits and pie crusts. Otherwise they'll become tough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gradually fold in the flour into our sourdough starter and our milk until it starts to come together. We don't wanna go too uh, vigorously with it just until you notice that it's coming together in a ball like so. I'm kind of going down the middle and giving it a flip and then going down the middle and giving it a flip. So I like what I'm seeing right now. We have not too many shaggy loose bits at the bottom. So I'm gonna get some flour and lightly flour our surface. Bear with me. Yeah, great. So maybe a generous coating, not swimming in flour, but generous, right? I'll dump it out. Not a big deal that it's falling apart. It's totally okay. The dough's gonna be sticky in some places and dry in other places, but we'll fold it all together. And this recipe really comes together in no time. Squeegee off our spoon. My oven's going right now. It's preheating to 400 degrees and my rack is in the center and this recipe makes 12 biscuits now if you wanted to make your biscuits sweeter you could totally just add like a tablespoon of sugar in there all right so flouring the hands a bit kind of picking up the pieces and making it into a cohesive ball now i'm going to flatten it out somewhat Flouring the hands, moving the dough, right? Those are good strategies to keeping your dough from sticking to the counter. So I'm gonna, it's, it's about two inches tall. I'm gonna flip it over and press it down again. We're just folding it a couple of times until it becomes all one mass. And again, you'll feel the difference in the texture of the biscuit. It becomes just a little bit stronger, but we don't want to overwork it. Oven's hot. Um, Otherwise, again, tough biscuits. Nobody wants tough biscuits. I think I like it. Maybe you need to fold yours once more. Maybe not. So what I'm doing, notice I don't have a rolling pin here. It's so easy to go crazy with a rolling pin. So I'm just gently, again, making sure to move the dough to make sure there's flour underneath it and it's not sticking to the counter. I'm just gonna flatten it out to like my one knuckles length or in height and if you want trade secret here to tall biscuits you start with tall dough crazy i know so i like that pretty good now get yourself a biscuit cutter if you don't have a biscuit cutter no problem get a cup so i like this glass not just because it's like octagonal or something, but it's uh, got a thin rim on it. All right, so first of all, you dunk your glass in flour, and then I like to start on the edges and just give her a press. Just press, no little turning, just press it and move it out of the way. Cool? Nice. Nice and thick. Now, I'm going to dunk the glass again, and then just keep working around. I like to make as little um, little extra pieces as possible, as few extra pieces as possible, because at the end I'll show you what we do. And they can be a little uh, like floury on parts, little buttery at parts. It's all gonna come out in the wash. And this recipe, like I said, makes about uh, 12. And I like to collect my little scraps. We'll put them over here. And we'll make some room for the tray. Now I've got a tray that's greased a little bit. And I'm just going to start lining them up. 
they're about one inch apart or so. Dunking in between, so important, trust me. Now, there's an argument of what one should put on your biscuits. I am a honey kind of girl. Jam sometimes, gravy certainly. I have tried both the honey and the gravy with this recipe and I did not add sugar to my dough though. But again, your biscuits, your prerogative. It's sometimes thicker in the center, that's okay, flatten it out somewhat. And if you're like missing a few corners, it's homemade, right? It tastes just as good. Getting close. What I love also about this recipe is that you have everything that you need already, most likely. You can whip these up at a moment's notice. All right. Perfect. Oh. All right, so now we get to the scraps. I am not a water upper and re-flattener. What I do is I hold it in my hands, I do my best to divide it equally, or maybe it makes one for you. And I will just gently shape it into something that resembles a biscuit. About the same height. And then I'll just plop it on the tray. And I usually say something to the effect of, this is dad's biscuit, he'll eat it no matter how ugly it is. And it's true. Or me, I'll eat it too. I'll eat it, see that's the cook's, uh, that's the cook's bonus here too. So you can eat all of the ugly things before anyone else sees. All right, so this batch made 13. And I'm just gonna put them in the oven, in the center rack, for 12 minutes, and uh, then they'll be done. Aren't they beautiful? I'm telling you, these came together in like a half hour. They, they're not fussy, they don't have to be fussy, they don't have to look pretty, but look, look at the flakiness, guys, look at the flakiness. That's what that gentle folding does, that's what the um, cutting the butter in does, making sure that it's cold. So look at that. Right? Decent size, huh? Well, these are still still really hot. I've literally just pulled them out of the oven, but I'll tear one apart for you so that we can all admire it together. See? Look at that. The steam. And they're fantastic. Very light and fluffy. Ready for whatever you're going to top them with. All right, well, I hope you give it a try. Um, thanks for joining me, it's always a pleasure, and I'll catch you at the next recipe. Bye.